Thank you for staying with us on Health Digest as we discuss the burden of cancer, specifically on children who've lost their parents. You can be a part of this conversation. You can tweet me at Dr. Masi Korir or at KTN News KE. You can send us an email on healthdigest at standardmedia.co.ke. We have three ladies who have walked the journey of losing parents to cancer. And in this next part, I'd just like to hear from them. Um, and we'll start with you, Edith. What has worked for you in coping or getting to come to terms with the loss of your dad? What, what, what are the things that have worked for you to make it a little bit easy and bearable? Well, I guess uh, I, I am a people's person. I interact a lot, since the, seeing that I, I do community work. And uh, it ha though, though it hasn't been easy, I have one friend especially, and she's here with me. Uh, on the day that my, my dad died, is the same day that her father was uh, diagnosed with prostate cancer. And uh, she, she suffered a stroke at the same time. And uh, she has been encouraging. She's worked with me. And as a family, I guess uh, that's why I was talking about grief counseling, because uh, I have to, I've had to be there for my, I have a stepmom. Again, when we buried our dad on, on a Friday, on a Monday, she was uh, in theater. So I had to be strong for the whole family. And uh, nobody knew what I was going through. They expected me to be strong. And I was strong for them. But I would break down and cry. When I was alone, I think the people who suffered the blunt of my grief were my kids, because they they saw what I was going through, and they they were like, "Mama Musijali, Guka is in a better place. I know atawe haunge taka. I endele na wiyo chungwa likuwa nayo." So they comforted me. And uh, I can't say I didn't even get any counseling. I didn't, but I accepted. I knew because I loved my dad so much. And uh, again, just like what my kids were saying, I wouldn't have wanted him to continue suffering. So I had to let go. And though I, I let go, I still haven't let go because I, I actually fear going back home to a place that I won't find him. I, 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 it's, it's not an appealing idea. I don't like going home at all. And uh, when he was alive, I used to go home. Almost every weekend, I would be at home. But these days, since he died, almost a year now, I've gone home once, got there late, woke up and left very early. And, uh, but also knowing God and uh, being of Christian faith and I'm a saved uh, person, so I've been seeking the face of God and my spiritual mentor has been walking the journey with me and I thank her. Though it's not been easy, but my friend, my kids and my spiritual mentor have been there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Natasha, what has worked for you specifically and your siblings? Okay, for me and my siblings, okay, for each year, every beginning of the year, it's been two years now, every beginning of the year, we sit down and talk about what we feel in the presence of dad. And we share what you're feeling at the moment and what you've had to face without mom. And I've also had really supportive friends who just let me talk the whole day about how I feel about my mother and how I feel about her absence. And it's been really encouraging because I don't have to say, 
shut up and keep it to yourself because I have people who offer a, le- a, 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 a listening ear. And I've also had to interact with people who have played the role of my mother. And they've been mentors, they've been mothers, they've been counselors, they've been everything to me. And it's made it easier for me to heal. I wouldn't say I'm there yet, because I started with keeping it from my friends. I didn't tell my friends I lost my mom immediately, because I did not want to get the Woye eyes, I pity you when I get back to school. And I was in my last year of high school, so I didn't want attention. I did not want pity. I felt like it would drag me behind, which it did not, thank God. And, um, but mostly, I think it's because of my dad. He's been really supportive. And to be honest, my dad and I were not close before mom passed on but it created an opening for us to become closer to dad. And he listens, he calls daily to find out how you're doing, how you're coping with your mom's absence. And he has been a mother and a father. And it's not easy to find that kind of person to just listen to you. And I remember before mom passed on, I asked her one question. How do you know a person loves you? And she said, time will tell. When she passed on, I remember trying to think of that time when we were talking about that. And the fact that dad left everything to take care of mom. And that is when it actually registered in my mind that that is what she meant by time will tell. And thereafter, I have been able to cope with my situation. It's not a situation as such. It's just a new life, a life without a mom. But I have other people who take care of me. So I'm doing well. And my siblings are also there for me. They're older than me. And I feel like when I look at my elder sister, I see my mom. Because as much as she's a child, she took up the role of being the first girl of the family. She took up the role of being the mother of the family. And I really thank God for all that. And I've gotten to attend um, Limao sessions, some of them, and they've been really helpful to me as much as I'm not. They've just helped me a lot. I've gotten to share, and it's brought some form of closure for me because mm-hmm. I couldn't let it out immediately. I lost my mom. I couldn't cry. I couldn't. I don't know if I was in shock. I've managed to go through it. Yeah. Nancy, what what is it that has worked for you and made the journey or the process easier and better to deal with? Uh, Sometimes I'm still a wreck. (laughs) But um, I think Limau has been more of a healing journey for me. Uh, Being around cancer warriors has taught me how to be strong. I have a very supportive dad who has really helped me along this journey. Sometimes he's worried because I get the burnout. Sometimes it's also very emotional and I can say tough because some of the patients we meet face to face and then they celebrate their chemo days, they finish their treatments and then they eventually leave us. So that brings back my mom's memories. But some of the ones who have been with us, most of them, 
they thank us because we have a forum of Limau Angels and that's the mourning and grieving support group, which we have psychologists who help us. They do get therapy once in a while. And um, the, the, the burden of cancer is really, really tough when you become an advocate. And not just an advocate who decided, oh, there's a problem with cancer, maybe. We speak from our hearts. We speak from blood, sweat, and tears that has brought us this far. So when we get people who thank us by doing what we do, that's healing and therapy for me. So, okay. Um, just to close this conversation, what would you tell children who, um, whose parents have been diagnosed with cancer or who have lost uh, their parents to, to cancer? So one word from each one of you. We can start with Nancy. My biggest advice for newly diagnosed um, caregivers, oh, the, the warriors themselves, they have the caregivers, they, they, get, they come in with a lot of confusion and sad. And the fastest way we help them is by putting them in a support group. Sometimes they don't want, and that's fine. But once they're ready and they get into the support group and read everybody's stories, that calms them down. You come to a platform where people are very supportive. You cannot walk on this journey alone. If you're a caregiver, we are very good friends with Natasha. You know, she will sit down and she'll, um, Edith will tell me, or oh, talk to me in a language that I understand. She knows what exactly that I'm going through. So being in a support group, being positive, and looking at the fact, there's a book that really helped me, when bad things happen to good people. We are supposed to be the examples for other people who are going through the journey. Mm -hmm. So if we are still alive and encouraging other people, inspiring every, everybody else with our journey, it should be my chance for me to live a purposeful life to make sure I'm leaving the world a better place that I found it. Okay. So being there to encourage other people has been a motivational for me. Okay. Well, for any person, any child of a mother, any child of a father, who's going through a journey where you have to watch your mom or your dad suffer from cancer, I just say, hold on, hang in there. Be strong for that mother. Have that smile they've always seen when you are growing up. Just be that person to give them the joy that they don't have, the joy that they've been deprived of by the pain they're going through. And I'd really encourage us children to talk to each other. If you see your sibling is down, just talk to them, because you know what you're going through. And a mother to you is a mother to your sibling and a mother to your other sibling. So the same love you feel for your mother is equally similar to your siblings. Therefore, just talk to each other, encourage each other, and be there for each other. And for every parent out there, when your wife, your spouse is suffering from something and your kids are getting the impact of whatever is coming their way, just be there and be supportive of your kids and do not leave them in the darkness because it does not help. Let them know the truth and walk with them in the journey of life, of cancer. All you need is support to go through this. With a, with a circle of friends who are supportive, a circle of family who are supportive, you will make it. That's what I believe. Thank you. What I can say is that uh, for, for those who are newly diagnosed, they still hope because so many people these days are beating cancer. And it's good to go for tests. Ali, if you, uh, you, you suspect something is wrong with you, it's good to go for, uh, for those tests. And to the community, these people don't need your sympathy. They need empathy. Walk with them. Talk to them like your equals. Nobody said the cancer is a death sentence. It doesn't have to be. So when you're walking, when you, f you find somebody who has cancer, encourage them. Don't pity them. They don't need pity. 
they need to be one, to be felt, to, to feel like they're one of you. So empathize, kindly don't, don't stigmatize them or, or see like they, they are not fit anymore because so many are beating cancer. And I would like to say something to the government, do something about cancer. It's taking away so many people. And until it has happened to you or to a member of your family, you will never know. You will never know. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed, those numbers that we talked about, the 33,000 or so Kenyans that die of cancer every year are represented here. They are not just statistics, but they are people. They are people's parents, they are people's children, and clearly, as we can see, it's not an easy journey to walk with. And from those that have walked this journey, you cannot walk it alone. You need support. And as a society, as a community, we need to support and help each other walk through this journey, even if it means just lending a listening ear or just being a shoulder to cry on when people are going through this experience. That's all we had on this conversation with children who've lost their parents to cancer. This is Health Digest. I'm Dr. Masi Korir. I leave you with this week's Patient's Diary. My name is Jamatia. Michelle is nine years old. We met her while she was recovering at MP Shah's pediatric ICU after a life-changing surgery. You'd be forgiven to think that this girl is five years or less. This is because for her nine years of life, she grew up with a problem that went undiagnosed. Like every other patient in Kenya, Michelle's parents had made trips from one hospital to the next without much help. But as she grew, we noted that uh, she has a problem. She's growing slowly. And then every time she, she got a flu or malaria, it could really take her down. And so we were advised to see a specialist in Nakuru. This was after the young Michelle was deteriorating, becoming slower and inactive by the day. They did several tests that revealed that Michelle had a hole in the heart, something that she was born with. For the parents who are, they are not employed with the kind of life in the, in the village, they were so worried. As, as uh, the, the rest of the family members, I, I was so shocked and with the amount that we were told that it will cost for the operation, we were so worried, we were so scared. Luckily for this family, Healing Little Hearts, a charity group of specialists from the London were at MP Shah Hospital to offer the exact kind of help that Michelle needed, open heart surgery to close the hole in the heart. Michelle is progressing very well. We are so grateful. We are seeing her now coming back to life. She can even smile. I remember that screening day. She could not even accept any gift. But after that, today she can even greet the doctor. She's happy. We are seeing a great progress. I am in class three. What is the name of your school? Makoi. With her little heart now healed, Michelle is looking forward to going back to school, leaving her childhood like her other peers and growing to her full potential.